Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool dryer drum felt seal. It's going to be a very easy repair and it only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the adhesive and the drum felt seal. The drum felt seal is what seals the hot air into the drum as it rotates. The main reason to be changing it out is if it's damaged and all the hot air is leaking out. In order to get to the part, we have to take the dryer apart. First thing we're going to do is use our quarter inch nut driver to remove the two screws on the top so we can take it off. Once you have the screws out, we can pull the top off. All you have to do is pull it back until it stops and then you can lift it off the dryer. Now we're standing in front of the machine. To get the console off, we have to release a tab on each side. All you have to do is press on it and then lift out on the console on that side. And there's one on the other side. Once you have those released so the bottom of the console is kind of swung out, there's three locking tabs along the top that we have to lift up on to release. Once you have those off, we're going to just carefully set it down right here and then we're going to reach in with a small flathead screwdriver and release this locking tab for this wire harness so we can pull it off the control board. Once you have that out, then we can pull this panel off and set it aside. Next thing we're going to do is remove this panel that holds the control board and we're going to lay it over the back of the dryer. Once you have the screws out, we're going to very carefully lift this up and drape it over the back of the dryer so it's out of the way. You just want to be careful you don't bang the control board against anything. Once you have it out of the way, we can take the rest of the dryer apart. Next, we can take out the four screws that hold the console mounting plate on. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver and take them off. Once you have all four screws out, you can lift it out and set it aside. We have to take off the access panel on the bottom of the dryer. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to remove the screws. Now that we have the screws out, we can lift the panel out. All you have to do is pull the bottom forward and lift it off. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver again and we're going to take off the two lower screws. In order to get the front panel off, we have to take the door switch wiring harness off. There's a little locking tab right here holding it onto the ducting. We're just going to lift that up and take the wire harness out. Once you have it released, then we can pull the wire harness out and use a small screwdriver to take the plug apart. Once you have the wiring harness disconnected, we can continue to remove the front panel. With the door switch disconnected below, we're going to open up the dryer door and use our Phillips screwdriver to take out these screws that hold the lint screen housing to the front panel. Once you have those two screws out, we can close the dryer door and then we can go back to our quarter inch nut driver and take the rest of the panel off. Now we can take the top screws off with our nut driver. When you're taking the second one off you want to make sure you kind of hold the front panel on so it doesn't fall off. And once you're ready to pull the front panel off, behind this front panel on this bulkhead there's a seal that you want to be careful that you pull this front panel off slowly so you don't tear the seal.
If your dryer has these moisture sensor bars, you're going to have to disconnect the wire harness just like we did the door switch. So take a small flathead screwdriver and pull it apart. Once you have it disconnected, then we can remove the screws that hold the front bulkhead in. We're going to take out these two that hold the duct on here. On these four screws, we're going to take the bottom two out, but just loosen the upper two up so we can lift the bulkhead off. Now that we have both upper ones loose, we can lift the bulkhead out of the dryer. After you have the bulkhead off, if you see a bunch of lint like this built up in your blower housing, you want to make sure you clean that out. Dryer lint is a big cause of house fires, so you want to get it cleaned up so you don't have any problems in the future. Now that we have the front bulkhead out of the way, we can reach in and take the belt off the pulleys. We're going to reach in with our left hand and grab the idler pulley and pull it towards the outside of the machine so we can take the belt off the pulleys. Now that we have the belt off the pulleys, we can use it to lift up the drum and guide it out of the dryer. Now that you have the drum out of the dryer, you can set it down on the ground and very carefully take the belt off and set it aside. Then you can take the drum and set it on the opposite end that you're going to do so we can change out the felt. With the drum out of the dryer, we're going to take the old seal off. You want to get behind it with a razor blade and if it's not torn already, you can just cut it. Once you have it cut, you can very carefully just peel it off around the tub and just be careful as you go around. And once you have it all the way off, we can go around and clean off the residue as best as possible before we put the new one on. Now that you have the old drum felt seal off, you want to make sure you go around and clean off all this residue as best you can. We're going to go around with a wire brush and clean it up. Here's the old drum felt seal next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. As you're going around the felt seal, we're just trying it on to show you this. Sometimes due to manufacturing or the fact that it's a little dry or it's shrunk up, It'll be very hard to get this last little bit on. So what you can do is take it back off and very carefully hold it with some tension and stretch it out just a little bit. You want to be careful that you do this and then try it and stretch it and try it a couple times because you don't want to stretch it too far because you're not going to be able to take material out if you stretch it out too much. So once you try it and get it to where you need, when you put it on, you want it to go on pretty easy up until the last point, and then you can put the last section on, and it'll be tight. Now that we have the felt seal sized, we're going to open it up right here and put it over the drum lip, making sure that the black material is on the outside. And we're going to put a clothes pin right here, and then work our way around, putting a clothes pin every so often. Once you get to this last section, you may have to use both hands to kind of come together and get it over the lip of the drum. Now that we have the felt on, we're going to lay the drum on its side so we can put the glue on. 
Now that we have the drum on the side, we're going to go around and lift up the felt seal lip and put the glue in there and move the clothespins as we go around. You want to be very careful with this stuff. Make sure you put a towel down so you don't get any on the floor. Wear gloves if you got them. It's pretty sticky stuff. And uh, once you get it on something, it's kind of tough to get off. All right, so we're going to go this way. So we're going to lift up the seal. And you saw when you took it off that there wasn't a whole lot of this in there. But, you know, put a good bead down there so you get good contact and everything. But not so much that it squirts out when you put the felt seal back. And once you get to a clothespin, you can move it up and keep going. The adhesive dries pretty quick, so once you go all the way around, you can go around and just press the gasket down again, making sure it's in place. You leave the clothespins on to hold it and once the glue is set for about an hour or so you can put it back into the dryer but you want to let the uh, glue cure for 24 hours before you run the dryer or put any heat on it going around and pressing down on it also works the glue up into the felt it's going to help it stick better All right, once you've gone around and everything's held in place, we can set it onto the other end. Then we can let it sit for an hour or so while the glue dries. Now that you let the glue dry for about an hour or so, we're going to take all the clothespins off and then flip the drum over, put the belt back on so we could put it back in the dryer. Once you have the drum up like this, you can grab the belt from wherever you had it and slip it over. Once you have it lined up where the wear mark is, where the belt is supposed to go, you can lift the drum up and guide it back into the dryer and set the drum on the rollers. Now that we have the drum back in the dryer, we can reach in and route the belt through the pulleys. Remember, we're going to reach in with our left hand and pull the idler pulley over towards the side of the dryer so we can route the belt through the pulleys. Now we can put the front panel on. We're going to line up the blower housing with the blower wheel and then lift up the drum so the rollers go on. And then we can lift it up and put the bulkhead back on the screws. Now that we have the front bulkhead on, we can use our quarter inch nut driver to put the rest of the screws in. We're going to first put in the two gold screws down at the bottom. Now that we have the blower housing screws in, we're going to put in the bottom screws on the panel and tighten the upper ones down. Now that we have the front bulkhead on, we can put the front panel on. To put the front panel on, you're going to line it up with the screw holes and hold it in place while we use our quarter inch nut driver to put the screws in. Now we can put the screws on the bottom.
Now that we have the front panel on, we can open up the door and use our Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws that hold the lint housing to the front panel. With those two screws installed, we can close the dryer door and then we can reconnect the wire harnesses underneath. First one we're going to do is the door switch. So we're going to reconnect these two connectors. All you have to do is plug them in so it gets a good connection. And then we have to route this through this clip right here and lock it in place. Once you have the wires in there, you can just squeeze it and it should hold everything together. Then we can reconnect the wire harness for the moisture sensor. To reconnect the moisture sensor, we're just going to reach up and grab the other wire harness. And same as the door switch, we're just going to line them up and lock them together. Once you have the moisture sensor wiring harness reconnected, we can put the access panel back on. All you have to do is line it up and push it up into place. Once you have it in, you can hold it while you grab your nut driver and put the quarter inch screws back in. With the access panel back in place, now we can go up top and put everything else back on. Next we can put in the control panel support frame. We're just going to set it in place and we're going to put in the two screws that hold it in on the front. Then we can put in the ones in the top in a second. Now we can put in the screws on the top. Now that we have the front panel in, we're going to swing this panel that holds the control board on over and line it up so we can put the screws in. Once you have it lined up, you can use a quarter inch nut driver again to put the screws in. Now that we have the electronic board mounted, we can put the control panel back on. To put the control panel back on, first we're going to feed the wire through the bulkhead panel and then we can lower the console into place and you have to line up the tabs and then push it in to lock it into place and you want to make sure that the tabs on each end go through and lock in place. Once you have it on, then we can grab the wire harness and plug it into the control board. Once you have it in, give it a tug to make sure you get a good connection. Then we can put the top back on. To put the top on, all you have to do is set it down so the lip goes right there in that channel. And then set the top down and then push it in so it locks into those tabs. Now that we have the top on, we can use our quarter inch nut driver to put the two screws in to hold it down. Now that we're done repairing the appliance, we can plug it back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.